Hi everyone, I'm Balkat and this is the second tutorial of how to create Pong using Python. Last time we left when we created this window. In the window we had both of our blocks but we couldn't move them. This time we are going to learn how to move the blocks as well as how to create the ball. Let's start by moving the blocks. To move the blocks, we are going to create a new function. Before we learn to move the blocks, I'm going to fix a little mistake that I made last time. And it's mostly a placement mistake. Nothing in the code is wrong. It's just that this part right here tends to go at the start of the code, meaning after you, after you create the colors, after you create after you create some parameters. So let's start by fixing that. And after we fix that, we are going to create our function. Inside the block class, we are going to create our move function. That function, it's only going to need itself as an, as an argument. As, a, as I said in tutorial one, Pygame is a module that works based on events. Those events can be each key that you pressed in your keyboard. Now, we are going to get those keys. So we're going to create a variable known as keys. Keys is going to be equal to pygame.key.getPressed. This is going to tell us if a key is pressed or is not pressed. If a key is not pressed, it's going to return a zero. However, if the key is pressed, it's going to return a one. Now, this keys variable is going to be in the form of a is going to be in the form of a library. Now, a library in Python has these type of brackets. Inside those brackets we are going to have different types of arguments. In this case, those arguments are going to be each of the keys on our keyboard. A, C, G, I. Every single key is going to be on it. And each one of these keys is going to have a value assigned to it, whether it's pressed or it's not pressed. For example, if we press A, the value is going to be 1. If we don't press C, the value is going to be 0. If we don't press G, the value is going to be 0. And if we press I, the value is going to be 1. This is what our keys variable is going to be. Now, what we are going to do is we're going to use that information to tell our blocks to move. Before we move, we are going to assign a new variable to our block class. That variable is going to be self.value or self.val for short. Value is going to be a specific value which the blocks move every time we press a key. The value that I saw worked fine was eight. That value can be changed and it'll make the blocks go faster or slower. Now in our move function, we are going to check what keys got pressed. Now, what keys do we want to check if they are pressed? We want to move our blocks with the up and down keys as well as the W and S keys. So let's start with the up and down keys. We're going to do as follow. If keys, we open and close brackets, and we put pygame dot uppercase k unders underscore up. What this means is if the value that corresponds to up is true, meaning if it's one, then whatever is after the if is going to be executed. In this case, what we want it to happen is we want to move our block up. For that, we are going to change the Y position the block has. 
So we are going to reassign the value for the y position. So self.y is going to be equal to something. If you remember from last time, the y-axis in Pygame increases from top to bottom. So if we press the up key and we want to move up, we have to subtract. So if we decrease the value, we go up. For that, we're going to do this, minus equals self.value. This is the same as saying self.y equals self.y minus self.value. This minus equals is the same as saying that you're going to redefine the value self.y by subtracting self.value from itself. Now we are going to do the same process but for the down key. So if keys, open and close brackets, pygame dot uppercase k underscore down. So this is going to be if down is pressed, then self dot y is going to be plus equal self dot value. Remember that plus equal is because in pi game the values in the y-axis increase while you go down. Before we try this program we are going to have to write a new function. Now that function is going to be update update. Update is only going to need itself. What update is going to do is that it's going to redefine our self-direct. That means it's going to tell the draw function where to draw our rectangle. That means that we have to reassign the x and the y value because its it position changed. So self-direct is going to equal we open and close parentheses, and now x is going to be self.x, which in this case is the same, but the y x, the y value is going to change. So we're going to put self.y. So whichever value it changes to, whether it goes up or it goes down, when it gets updated, the rectangle is going to change its position. Now the width and the height are going to be the same. So self.width and self.height. Now that we have the update function, we have to call that function after we check the keys that got pressed. So we do self.update and it doesn't need any parameters. Let's see if it works. We get the screen. Okay, the pieces are not moving. And that is because I forgot to add that function in our main loop. So we go down to our main loop and inside our loop, but outside of our events, we are going to put block1.move. And it's not going to need any parameters. And then block2. Move. This way for every loop that the program is doing, it's going to move our blocks. Let's try it now. We are here and then we press up and the blocks move and then we press down and the blocks move. Now we have two problems. The first one is that if we press up or down, both of the blocks are moving. The second problem is that the blocks are going off screen. So if we go up, the blocks go off screen. And if we go down, the blocks go off screen as well. So we have, so we have to fix both of those problems. Let's start by making each block move independently. For that, we have to go once again to our move function. In here, we are going to assign the move function one more parameter. 
that parameter is going to be block. Block is going to tell us either if it's block 1 or if it's block 2. We want one of those blocks to be moved using the up and down keys and we want the other block to be moved using the W and S keys. Now, which block do we want to move using which keys? In my opinion, it's, it makes more sense to have block 2, meaning the one on the right, to move with the up and down keys because they're on the right side of our keyboard. And block 1 move with W and S because both the block and the keys are on the left side. So that's what we're going to do. In this case, we are using the up and down. So we're going to check if it's block 2. So if block equals equals 2, meaning it's the one on the right, then I wanted to do this procedure. However, if it's block 1, so if block equals 1, well, equals equals 1, then I wanted to do something similar, but not exactly. So we're going to copy this and we're going to paste it. Now we are going to change up for a lowercase w and we're going to change down for a lowercase s. My bad, for a lowercase s. Okay, so now each block should move on its own. Oh, before we run it, we have to assign this block parameter in our loop. So in our main function, in our loop, we have to assign each parameter. So block one dot move is going to need as a parameter number one. And block two dot move is going to need as a parameter number two. That is because block is the first block and then block two is the second block. Now we can check to see if it works. We have once again the window. If I press up, the right one moves. If I, if I press down, it goes down. If I press W, the left one moves up. If I press S, the left one moves down. So far it's working. Now we have to make the program check whether or not it's going off screen. For that, we have to assign two more parameters in our move function. That is going to be top and bottom. In here, I'm going to put some quotation marks just so we have some information in our parameters. Block is going to either be a one or a two. And it's going to tell us which block it is. Now top is going to be a number. That number is going to tell us the highest part of the screen. Bottom is also going to be a number. It's going to tell us the lowest part of the screen. This way we know when we cannot go any higher and when we cannot go any lower. Now we have to check that every time we move. If we're going up, we have to check if the block hasn't passed the highest part of the screen. For that, we have to do as follow. If self.y, meaning if the value in y that the block has is lower than or equal to top. Now, why, why lower? Remember that, remember once again, that in Pygame, the value decreases as you go up. So if we're going up, we have to check if it's lower than top. So if the value in Y, it's lower than top, it means that the block has passed the highest part of the screen. If we do that, we want to revert this process. We want to do the opposite. So if we, if we go higher than the highest part of the screen, we want to do self.y plus equals self.value. This way, we are 
fixing the error of the value going higher than the screen. And we're going to do the same for the lower part. In this case, if self.y is greater than or equal to bottom, meaning if our value in y is greater than the bottom part of the screen, then we want to revert our process, meaning we want to fix that we want to fix that mistake. So we do self.y minus equal self.value. Now we just have to copy now we just have to copy this and paste it for our first block. So copy it and paste and copy it and paste. Just make sure to put them accordingly. So the bottom one goes with X, with S, and the top one goes with W. Let's check now if it's working. If I press up, okay, so it's telling us that we have an error and that's my mistake. It's because we forgot to give move these two new parameters, top and bottom. For that, we go to our main function and where we called the move function for our blocks, we have to assign top and bottom. In this case, because we don't have the scoring screen yet, top is going to be the zero Y position. And bottom is going to be the total height of the screen. Now we can just copy these two values and paste them on the second block because they are the same. If we run the program now, we get that it works. So if I move all the way up, you see that it's not working. If I press W, I'm sorry, it's working. My bad, I, I made him, I'm sorry. <laughs> now, if you press W, it also stops at the top. Now, if I press down, okay, we have a mistake. It does stop, but stops farther down. And if I press S, okay, so it also stops, but stops farther down. So we have to check that. Let's go back. Okay, so when we are going down, we have to keep into account where this self.y is located. If you remember from the first tutorial, the y position that the block has is the highest position the block contains. So if we want to check if the lowest part of the block is, is touching the bottom of the screen, we have to take into account the height of the block. In this case, if we're going down, we have to check in this section if it's positioning y, self.y plus the block is height are greater than the bottom of the screen. This way, we won't make the mistake of going farther down the screen than necessary. Now we have to fix this same mistake for our other block. So in here, if we press S, we have to fix it. So if self.y plus self.height are greater than or equal to the bottom part of the screen, then revert the process. Now it should be working fine. We check, if we go up, it doesn't go off screen. If we go W, doesn't go off screen. If we go down, it doesn't go off screen. And if we go S, it doesn't work off screen. Okay, so now we got both of our blocks moving independently. Now we are going to create our ball. The ball that we're going to create is going to be another class. This class is going to be known as ball. Just like in our block class, the first function that we define is going to be the initiation function. So two underscores, init, two underscores. And now we have to put the parameters that the ball class is going to require. So the first parameter is going to be itself, so self, then it's going to need a starting x position, then a starting y position. We are creating a ball. As we know 
from drama through class or the class that everyone hated in high school bolts have a radius now in our block class we define width and height because we're creating a rectangle however now in our bolt we don't need height and width we need the radius other than the radius we're also going to need a color just in case you guys want to change the color that's fine now we have to assign each of these parameters a value in our ball class so self.x is going to equal x self.y is going to equal y self.radius is going to equal radius radius thank you and self.color is going to equal color now we can create our ball so in our main function where we have our objects we are going to create the ball so ball is equal to the ball class it's going to need an x y radius and color now what's going to be our x position as we can see in the example from first from the first tutorial we want the ball to be in the middle of the screen if we remember the total width of the screen is 8000 pixels and the total height of the screen is 600 pixels now we want this ball's x position to be half the width being 500 and half the height meaning 300 however we don't want to give the ball a specific numerical value we want to give it a dynamic value meaning if we change the width then the x position of the ball is going to change to always start in the middle of the screen in our code we only have to do width divided by 2 the y position is the same it will be the height divided by 2 that way we always know that's going to start in the middle now we have to give it a radius the radius is a little bit complicated and you have to play around to find a good number the number that I found worked properly is width total the total width of the screen divided by 50 and lastly we have to assign a color because we want this program to look as similar as the original game we want the ball's color to be white however you can change the color as you please you already know how to do it but in case you don't I'll be doing a video explaining how colors work in Python you can find that video on the upper right hand side of the screen where you have the information bubble now we created the ball class just like what happened on our last tutorial when we created our block 1 and block 2 we created the object but we haven't drawn the object so in our ball class we are going to create a new function that function is going to be dev draw draw is going to need itself and it's also going to need a window in which to draw one we are going to use the same function we used last time to draw our blocks pygame dot draw dot and in here we're going to choose the circle function which is going to allow us to draw the circle this is going to need four parameters a surface a color a position and a radius in case you need more information on how this works you can go to pygame.org and you can find more information on the parameters of the different functions that pygame has now the surface that we need is the window in which we're going to draw the object in this case is the window that we asked for the color is the color we created the object so it'll be self.color the position is going to be a set of coordinates meaning an x and y position for this we're going to create a new variable in our ball class the variable is going to be called self.center self.center is going to be inside a parenthesis 
dx position and then the y position. So it'll be x comma y. In our draw function, we only have to put self that center. And lastly, we need the radius. So that'll be self dot radius. To draw our ball, we have to go into our redraw window. This way, we can draw this ball whenever we call the function. For that, we have to add a new parameter. So after block two, we're going to put a ball. So whenever we call the function, it's going to need a ball to draw. Now we put the draw function of our ball. So it'll be ball dot draw. As a parameter, it's going to need a window. That window is known as win, which is the same one that we have been using. So ball dot draw win. Let's run the program and check if it works. Okay, so we are okay, so we are getting an error. That's because in our main function we forgot to call that ball. So in redraw window we have to put the ball argument and we also have the redraw window down here and we have to call the ball argument. Now it should work. Okay, so we are getting an, another mistake. That, mis that mistake is that in this section, in this section, it's telling us that it's expecting an integer argument and not a float. Now, in Python, there are two different types of numbers. There are integers, and then there are floats. Integers, as we learned from school, like fifth grade, fourth grade, I forgot, the integers are any whole number. That's a zero, a two, five, minus 24. All of those are integers. Now, a float number is any number that has a decimal point. So 1.5 is a float, uh, 2.21 is a float, minus 3.7, even numbers that have 0 0.0 are floats. So 1.0 is considered a float number. What we have to do is get everything that can be a float and change it into an integer just to be sure. Now, what numbers can be floats? Pretty much any number that is divided. In this case, I'm pretty sure the radius is our float number but just to make sure, we're also going to check our center. If we go back down to our main func function, where we define our ball class, where we define our ball object, we are going to change all of these parameters into integers, just to, just to be safe. To that, we do as follow. First, we put int, which is short for integer, and now we have to put a value inside the parenthesis of integer. That value has to be a whole number, meaning it cannot have any number after the decimal point other than zero. To do that, we have to, do, we have to round the number that's inside. So we have to put a new function, which is round. Round will round the number that's inside the parenthesis. Now we have to put two parentheses after the number just to make sure. Even though round returns an integer after it rounds the number down or up, I like to put the integer argument just to be absolutely safe that whatever comes out of it is going to be an integer and we don't get any other problem. Now we just have to copy this and paste it on the height and also paste it on the width. Just remember to put both of the parentheses afterwards so we don't get any mistakes. Now we should be able to run the program and have the ball. So as you can see, we have both of our blocks. They move one independently from the other. They stop at the wall as they should do it. And we have the ball. That's it for the second tutorial. Next time we'll see how the ball moves and we will also make the ball bounce off the walls and bounce off the blocks. If you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments. And thank you for watching.